she is. Hi. Hey, Kristen, how you doing? I'm okay, you know, can't complain. Yeah? Do you like our funny so. little, funny, funny <laughs> yeah. little walk on? Yeah, it's a, it's nice to have an intro. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like our little. Um, it's it's probably one of the only things that we've got that's unique about this podcast at the minute. But we're um we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, I'll walk on for for all the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, usually we do. You know, we'll do a walk on when the um, when the guest is like in our studio in real life so i'm sitting there yeah with, yeah with the guest and i don't know it looks kind of cool i think it looks a bit more like a kind of cool late night talk show um but yeah, then we, tr we tried yeah, it remotely definitely. on zoom and i think it looks great as well you'll see you'll see when the youtube video comes out <laughs> gives it a sense of beginning <laughs> yeah that's totally it so you're not just kind of like having a little conversation and then just suddenly out of nowhere being like okay let's begin mm -hmm. But look, yeah. how's how um, how's life going? Like, how how have you been navigating the infamous 2020 so far? Uh, you know, some days are better than others, which I think everyone can can agree with right now. You know, um, yeah. In the beginning, it wasn't much of a change to be locked down, just because um, we all work from home. So like I, I did like I did feel like lucky in that way, but I don't know. After three months, not leaving your house does seem long. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And then like everything else that's going on too, only just adds to it. But you know, I I can't complain. Like I have a house. I'm safe and in good health. So <laughs> yeah. And is that like you do, do you um... trying to see the bright side? Yeah, right. I mean, you've got to try. <laughs> you've got to try at least. Um, do you like what you make yeah. your art at home? Yeah, yeah. I actually moved into the place I'm currently at last October, which I'm so grateful I did because my old place was literally like a tiny one room studio in a huge apartment building. And like to be locked in a one room studio like, during a quarantine would be like so much harder than like we moved into um a house with our friends so it's three of us living here and there's like a garage out back that we've converted into a studio so yeah oh, nice are you like are you definitely, all artists definitely nice. is it a creative household yeah i live with yeah i live with um luke pelletier he's my he's my fiance now but like he also does art and then our other roommate is uh jillian jillian evelyn she's oh, worked with really? you guys a bunch yeah so. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so. i have no idea that's amazing that must be yeah, a real, yeah. real creative uh, household jillian has a black pug and we have a fawn pug and he, we have a boy she has a girl i'm like it's really cute and we call we call the house the pug house now so yeah <laughs> what's the fawn a, what's the fawn pug uh, like the normal tan pug they just call them fawn colored that is super cute and where are you have you got the pugs with you now um i have i have mine with me here rooster Come here. He oh, wants wow. his chew. Look at that. He doesn't oh, care about so me. Cute. He just wants his chew. <laughs> that, that's the way to start the um start the podcast. I'm at home and I've got my cat who's a Persian. Oh. A per Do you want to see the Persian? Yes. Yes, right, please. Let, let me grab the Persian. This is the way. That oh we my start. god. This is the way that all good podcasts should start. Showing yes. animals. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wait. <laughs> wow. Here he is. Oh my gosh, he's beautiful. This is Alfie. Wow. He's a ginger cat. Oh my God, he's like Crookshanks. What's, what's Crookshanks? <laughs> from, from Harry Potter, <laughs> like Hermione's cat. Do you know what? I need to get more up on my, on my Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she she has been she has been like cancelled recently, but the the books were magical as a child, so you know. She, yeah, how do you feel about how do you feel about that? Because obviously that's gonna ha you know pe people are getting cancelled. So yeah, what do you do with the movies? What do you do with the back catalogue? I mean, you know. I mean, I think I think these things should come to light. Like you you need to know about like how people really are. But also to a certain extent, I don't believe in white 
washing humanity, you know, like, and I don't think in dismissing everything immediately because of who it's, who it's maker was. Let's not say that there isn't a certain line and like everything, but it's like, like say for instance, like I was actually just having a talk with this with uh, about this with some friends but it's like to a certain extent I'm not going to these people as my moral compass it's like you know certain people like like I don't look to the the lead singer of my favorite band as like how I should model how I act in my real life like like whether or not their music is good is separate to an extent you know and I don't believe in just erasing someone or everything from his that isn't necessarily like palatable to our taste today you know because it like everything tells the whole story of like who we are you know the good and the bad so okay. i think if you try and like push away everything that even has like the taint of badness to it you can't ever move forward because that's ignoring like all of the parts of ourselves like we've all had like worse instincts you know and so for us to be like if you can't be like this way all the time i don't think that's like productive you know like i think there needs to be more of like a, a conversation and like yes like keep those things in mind when you like enjoy that person's work like think about who they are as like as a person but like also if we went through out history and like picked apart everyone's life there would be very little for anyone like like some of the best books paintings music it's by like fucked up people you know <laughs> like fucked up minds like you know like i'm just saying like it takes all the types to make the world go around and you can't ignore that yeah you know? no i'm with you on that i mean i think um yeah that's it if you if you're just gonna kind of you're gonna have a lot of cancelling to do when it's all said and done yeah and it's like it's like then there's the question of censorship. It's like like who decides what is okay now and what is okay, you know? Because like nowadays, like work like mine would have been like that would have been literally like degenerate pornography, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like like no chance. But like now it's more acceptable. But like t taste change with society, so like you have to keep everything in its like contextual lens too and like that means knowing the whole story like the ugliness of the story too but you can't pretend like things are better than they are or have been yeah no i agree with that and i think as well, the conversation is very important as well because i think mm -hmm. that has to be the end goal right it can't just this is what i've often thought about like punishment or, or like going to jail for for example it's like if all you're going to do is wait for for someone to like fuck up or wait for someone to have this kind of outrageous opinion that like is immoral and no one agrees with and then punish them <laughs> you know nothing's ever going to change so i think you know yeah. what you're saying there about like i get it i get that like certain actions have to have certain punishments to keep everyone safe yes yeah, certain consequences certain consequences but at the end you know i I think the end goal has to be conversation. Why does this person think like this, you know? Yeah. And especially people like, you know, there are some people that maybe are beyond saving, but would you think that like JK Rowling is one of them, you know? And I'm not saying like- Yeah, well, and I mean like her books well. have probably helped like so many children. Like for me, they added a lot to like my childhood too, you know, like it's just like, you know, and like, can you can't like, you can't disregard like all of the good that someone's, and you can't do like, like I have friends who are like, you know, LGBTQIA and like, they love her books, grooving them. So like that probably is breaky to like care that like someone whose work you looked up to is like a shithead, but like, I don't know. I think also like taking her books off the shelf. Like I never think book burning of any kind is good. You know, like. Yeah. What well, do, do you not? <laughs> like think the minute you start de like deciding what people can choose to read or choose to look at or choose to like listen to is when you start getting into dangerous territory too. I'm, I'm I mean, with you, but but I, I tell don't know you what. what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> No, if I'm, I'm with you completely, but I definitely haven't listened to any R. Kelly in a while. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, like, 
like i'm not trying i was never like a huge fan anyway so like i'm totally okay with being like yeah i don't need to go out of my way to like listen to his music you know and i think i think that should be like a personal choice for everyone too you know like yeah. i don't know i just think no. think yeah I, you know. I, I'm with you. I think it's a really interesting uh, like discussion. Um, I remember when Louis C.K., you know, the comedian Louis C.K.? Oh, yeah. The giant. He, yeah. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I like, I think that guy is super funny. I really. Oh, I did too. I saw him like live before yeah. it all came out. And I was like so disappointed because I like kind of like liked it. Like I thought he was like funny and like charming and i was like Ugh. yeah you know like <laughs> that's it and it, that's it it was disappointing but but mm -hmm. but i guess to like be really honest and strike upon like what you're talking about here it's like with r kelly genuinely i just feel a bit weird about listening to his stuff now it's all just like it's it's too extreme like the the you know yeah what, yeah what he's been accused of or i you know i don't know what the current status is in like what's going on but what he's been accused of is so extreme and like seems like you know this shit definitely happened that i just feel weird listening to it but yeah like, yeah I have watched Louis C.K. stand-ups since, and I won't talk about it. <laughs> you know, I don't really go around saying, "Yeah, I fucking still love Louis C.K." Yeah. But I guess that's where you know that's where it falls into yeah. that gray area. And what I think is super interesting about what we're talking about is, as well, like you know, some people are getting exposed, so maybe that's slightly mm -hmm. different. But someone like J.K. Rowling, who, who Rowling, or however you pronounce her name. Um, you know, she just decides one day to like create a, a tweet. I know. My my other friend was like, "Is this really the hill you want to die on? Like, why <laughs> were you even starting this conversation? Like, nobody asked you anything." And yeah. it's like, like, I mean, that's a whole nother thing. And like, the internet, I feel like, has a lot to do with people just like, like giving their unwarranted opinions all the time. Oversharing. But, you know. Here I am giving my opinion, so. <laughs> well, it's a great, it's a great opinion. But it is interesting because like how many people, you know, do we, like how many people have artwork and music that we love? And mm -hmm. yeah, all right, they haven't been exposed yet. <laughs> and they haven't, you know, they mm -hmm. haven't tweeted something they didn't need to share to, you know, yet. Mm -hmm. But they could be complete. They could be like really fucked in their head. You know, we, you don't know what you literally don't yeah. know what everyone's opinion is on, on loads of stuff. And if you did, yeah, you might have to cancel nearly everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's just like the same goes to say for like all the people in your life, you know, like, yeah, you know, the like, I'm just saying, like, everyone has their own opinion. And I think being open to others' opinions is the only way we can go forward because if you if you just immediately like black ball like certain of course certain things they're like you gotta go obviously but like i'm just saying like i i don't know i don't, I don't even know. know what i'm trying to say i just well what i think i just hope i hope is... everyone can get a little happier and better yeah. in the future <laughs> yeah well, I, I just think conversation is, is, is the way to do it. And I'm, I, look, I am totally with you. There are some actions where it needs to be like, nah, you got to go to jail or, you know, you, you got to get away from me. Yeah. But, but I'm like, oh, that's a felony. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But still, <laughs> if you can take some kind of understanding for, for, you know, from it in order to move forward, I think that's mm -hmm. way more helpful than just because effectively, if you don't do that, all you're kind of doing is going, la, 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 no, 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 shut up, shut up, cancel, cancel. You know, yeah. and, uh, and that's it. Yeah. But let's talk about your, you were talking about censorship with your artwork. Um, that's something mm -hmm. that interests me because do you, like, obviously I, I like, you know, um, I love your artwork. I adore your artwork. Uh, we've worked together on a t-shirt for, you know, you and Secret Walls and, um, you know, I hope we're going to work together loads, loads more. But I love your artwork, but it is definitely like it's real. Do you know what I mean? Like it's um, how, how do you describe your own artwork? So I don't want to do it a disservice by saying, oh, I mean, it's like this. I kind of I, I'm one of those artists. I kind of hate talking about my own stuff, you know, so yeah. But I, I definitely try to capture 
I don't want to make myself sound too grand or anything, <laughs> but like I do try to capture all, all of the human experience. So that includes like the banal moments, like the like moments, like violent moments, like sad moments, the happy moments, you know? So I, I think, and sad moments, you know, because like, desire like even just desire on a basic level it's such a like basic human instinct to want you know so i i i just want to show all that and sometimes that makes my work not as pal palatable you know but yeah whatever <laughs> no and you do but have you like have you had um instances where you know like you've been censored or you know yeah yeah definitely like uh, like a bunch of times and and what about I on mean, like social like media itself. yeah on instagram right yeah right. yeah instagram like so so many times that's why i always like put things over my pieces now if there is like specifically genitalia because like every every single time once you reach past a certain point of followers you're just gonna have some randos who like have problems with you or like you know like they're always trolls in the bunch anywhere you go so like if I show like any like even just like like I did like um an art book giveaway because Spade on the publishing company had a art of the erotic so like I ran like a raffle to like give it away just for people and they could like uh, share their favorite pieces of erotic art from history with me and like like even that post got taken down even though it was like kind of like a job thing just because like on the next slides through I had like different cropped in versions of some of the like people's entries you know because I wanted to share it and like these are like some of the greatest pieces of like art and history you know but like and like person had to swipe through to see the genitals, but like people, people just have problems with certain things. And so, is, you know, can't, is it can't always is it always being censored because some, does someone have to report you on Instagram? They don't have like a little robot or a little algorithm that can like. Yeah, it's always someone up. reporting because I've even had like stories taken reported, like because I once was featured in Hustler, which I was really proud of, like I fucking love Hustler, because I do a series of paintings based on like vintage Hustler cards. So it was like kind of perfect too. And like, I was really proud of it. So I took a picture of my article with the painting and like that kept on getting taken down re repeatedly, even though I like censored like all the stuff and it was all painted too. And like, so eventually I got, I got like pissed and I put a story, but like, that was the one time I reacted because I usually try not to get like pissed publicly or like even respond to things because I feel like it just keeps the ball rolling of anger. Yeah, yeah. But like, I don't know. Or like you... I've had like jobs, you know, kind of like canceled because like my work was too like whatever. So, you know, it's, it's just like, yeah. Well, let's get to the, let's get to the jobs because them um, in a yeah. sec because that's that's something separate and that that's weird to me because i don't know how you'd end up like you know people should know what they're getting into but um which is that by the way and they're not getting into anything it's just like you're literally painting like mm -hmm. real life it's, it's brilliant what you're painting but do you think on instagram does it feel like it's like the same like band of, of old <laughs> trolls that keep reporting you because sure, like, can, can we not report them? Can, can, you know, is there no way that you can kind of counter it? But seriously, and be like, look, Instagram, these people are like, they're fucking w with my livelihood. I mean, they're not really, hopefully, because you've got shitloads you of know, followers. And I'm sure you're... Yeah. I mean, to some extent, it's like really annoying and it pisses me off to have to like hide work that I work really hard on to be seen in its entirety. And I have to like hide that away way but uh, on the other instance like I'm I'm grateful that like I even have this opportunity to share my work with as many people as I do and that I can like as a woman paint these things and like get supported like in a in a more mainstream sort of way so I kind of just try to tell myself like if you're not like like evoking some sort of reaction in people with your art, you're doing something wrong. So, you know, the fact that like, maybe my work scandalizes a few people or upsets them, I'm like, okay, so that means maybe I am like pushing boundaries and like making people uncomfortable, which is kind of what you want art to do. So yeah. no, that's, that's what I tell myself at night. <laughs> that's true. I mean, that makes sense to me. I mean, 
I would think that maybe these people, they might die out soon, though. These are the same sorts of people. I remember growing up and I would, um, you know, when it came to 9 p.m., like obviously I grew up in, in London, um, in the UK. When it came to 9 p.m., it was called like the watershed. And, and after that, on TV, there could be like no, uh, only after that could you have any bad language, any kind of nudity. So any like daytime TV, wow. any daytime radio, <laughs> There was you weren't allowed to swear or anything and even as a kid i remember thinking like this is censorship and this is so bizarre like like who cares who gives a fuck like, yeah you know yeah but, yeah but i kind of like thought that maybe this is just you know it's a generational thing and 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 these people might die out at some point but maybe not maybe they maybe new people are, are, are being born every second that are going to grow up to have a problem with the naked yeah body. oh they're definitely young con young more conservative folks out there too and like like have the right to their opinion like that's my thing I'm like I never asked you to look like you followed me you knew what kind so then for them to censor me that's where it feels unfair because I'm not like pushing my work on anyone you know like I'm not like showing my like painted dick to their children and like coming <laughs> into their homes like you know like you should you should that should like, be there can, you can unfollow me if you that don't should like be their punishment Kristen you should find out who <laughs> yeah, they are look at it yeah look and it. just pop, just pop up outside like outside their living room window and be like look at it <laughs> Um, but tell tell me about tell me about what happened with with um, like the real world job moving off Instagram, which I do want to talk more about because Instagram's so interesting to me. It's yeah, especially with what's going on. But what happened with the with the jobs that that got cancelled? Um, I mean, I, I like I've definitely had some jobs that I've worked on where I've had to like redraw women just to like make their body form less you know like this or like. So some people don't like the super pointy boob as much. So I've had a few jobs where I've had to like kind of like round up the breasts a little more. I don't really? know why. Oh, so it's that's not, But to me, that's not We're, even like um. Oh shit, we can't show like a, a boob. I mean, they're they're saying we want to. Company, we don't want to point companies boob. get so many opinions. Yeah, I don't know. I think companies just like try to be ultra careful because like they have such broad audiences. They're like, they're like, God forbid, there should be a pointy teeth. But, but yeah, what, what's I mean, the problem? Like, there was what's the, the problem whole, like, with a pointy boob versus like a rounded boob? I don't, I don't get I don't it. No, you think a rounded boob would actually be more sensual? I mean, look, it's a boob's a boob, right? If it, I mean, if, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't agree, but if someone said no, you've got I think to put, maybe you've got it's to cover just it like, up. I think maybe pointy breasts look more aggressive, which is why I like drawing them pointy because a point is just automatically more aggressive looking than a rounded shape, you know? So maybe <laughs> that's, I don't know, who fucking knows? People are crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I saw something on this subject. I saw something about your posters being banned by the MTA in New York. Are we allowed oh, to talk about yeah, that? that was that was when I worked with um unbound which is this like awesome um like sex toy and like sexual wellness company in new york and they they got a bunch of artists to do um illustrations that were supposed to be in the subway like um love is wise i think i think uh laura calligan did one god I'm, my mind is like uh, this was like a couple years ago too so it's like i think robin Heisenberg's maybe work with them, but I think she's, no, she's worked with Doc Johnson. I'm like confusing my illustrators. Sorry. And my <laughs> sex toy companies. There are so many wonderful, wonderful it's sex easy toy to companies do. and illustrators, but yeah, they asked us to do subway, subway ads for their line. And like, there was no nudity or anything. Like we kept it really PG because of you know it's on the subway. Like some people even just had like still lives, you know, like no figures in it at all. But yeah, we got we got those ads shot down multiple times, and it what, was. What did you? Was, what was your illustration? Was, uh, fucked up. <laughs> My illustration was a woman lounging on her bed, like in pajamas, and she just had like a really messy room, and like throughout the room there were like little little things, like their little toys and stuff that they sell. But like I don't know, like. They had like erectile dysfunction, like, like ads too, with like obvious, like way more obvious penis shapes. 
around and I'm like it just it just feels like it was very arbitrary in their judgment of what can be uh, like on the subway and what can't be yeah like but what do you do you three-year-olds really know what a tickle tantric feather is and that it's sexual <laughs> like I don't think they care <laughs> But what do you think? Do you think the world would, okay, let's say like we skip forward a few years and, and we live in a world where it's like mm -hmm. no censorship. Yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want, say whatever the fuck you want, wherever you want. Will we get a bit bored <laughs> just having zero backlash? I think that the human mind is infinitely creative and we will always find new ways to fuck over each other and new ways to fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, that's I, what I, don't, I think. I don't disagree with that. Um, like, we didn't invent debauchery. That was around a long time ago with the Romans and Greeks. They were doing some wild shit that would like, yeah, that right? would like make us clutch our pearls. So, like, this isn't like sex isn't new, you know, and it'll never get old. So, yeah. And speaking of that, like, is that so? Like, People when need I look, to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> When I look at your work, I see like a bit of kind of like oh. ancient, um, like imagery, in, like inspirations in there. You know what I mean? Like maybe even like mythological or as you say, like Roman, Greek, ancient, like a kind of Asian inspiration is, mm -hmm. but, the, mm -hmm. but the scenarios all seem to be, or, you know, quite often they're quite like modern, you know, it's like modern men and women and, and, and whoever. Um, yeah. But is that's a conscious thing? Like, what what are you saying there? Is there you know? Um, I think it's it's a combination of my influences just melding together, like in a way that feels natural. Like, I I naturally am drawn to like history. Like, I, I was like a total nerd growing up, so I was always reading like Greek mythology books, like Greek plays, like any any sort of novel I could get my hands on that was like written in the 1900s or before you know <laughs> so I kind of just always look to those things for like inspiration naturally but also I live in the present day so I guess I translate it in a modern way and I also kind of like the the sense of timelessness combining those two elements gives my world like it makes it seem kind of like a, a parallel universe where like there's there are more possibilities than in our real world but it still very closely reflects our real world i don't know yeah no that's really cool Maybe. and i i also was just looking at your instagram as well and i saw a post about you talking about like going off grid um and you know getting off of social media which is something that I want to do at least once a week, <laughs> yeah. like quit it all. But what, you know, what's going on there? I mean, do you, I get so swept up in, in social media and posting and looking at people's stuff. And, you know, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like, yeah, the kind of addictive, like blood sucking, life sucking nature of Instagram versus <laughs> the fact it can be a useful tool for mm -hmm. self-promotion. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've always been kind of bad at like anything that involves technology. I'm not very computer savvy. Like I still have Photoshop CS5 on my like eight year old laptop from senior year when I was in high school. And like the only social media, um, what is it, network, I guess I have is Instagram. Cause like I got rid of my Facebook. I'm like, what do I have to say on Twitter? I've got nothing to say. And like, oh, like, uh, like I've never even tried to get into Reddit because it just seems like way too way too wild for me over there so I do kind of just like I'll read the news you know and then like of course I watch TV and movies and like I see things on Instagram but especially now I've been specifically setting I only look at my like Instagram like either once in the morning or like maybe once in the morning and like once at night just trying to like you know like I've been trying to read more just focus internally <laughs> yeah no that's great but when you set yourself those like that rule once in the morning once in the evening is that to like absorb other people's stuff or is that to yeah and just check in I'm like I'm still a part of the world you know just because even ignoring ignoring the problems won't make them go away you know and like 
do what you can but then to a certain extent it just becomes like like masochistic to keep going back and like seeing all the people fighting in comments and shit so i yeah. i'm just like like I, i'm saying like way too much also sorry to all the listeners <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah i tried to just stay back you know like even for for my emails i probably should check my emails more and i try to keep <laughs> up with them regularly but i like to live away from like technology for the most part like i have an ipad i still haven't figured out how to unlock it because i forgot the password you know like i got an ipad for a gift like a used one for christmas like i just i'm very like old school in how i work like when i draw things like i did for the t-shirt like i drew it on paper and then i scan it in you know because i just like feeling paper in my hand and like having the physical drawing and like then you can color it later and like use it for something else i don't know yeah, no, it's it's great. I mean, I wish that I could be the same. I, I like I have the the ambition to never be on the computer and never be looking into my phone. Oh, it'd be wonderful. It'd be wonderful. <laughs> but I just like I don't know how I can get there. To be honest, Kristen, like I I looked at my average my average screen time for my phone for the yeah. whole last week was over eight hours per day. Oh wow! Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> per day. Yeah. Yeah, for, per day. And look, I'll admit it, like, you know, with what I do working at Secret Walls, like, I need to be like... Yeah, you know, yeah, like, to an extent, you have to be, like, tuned in. I have to be, but that probably only accounts for, like, four or five of those hours. <laughs> There's definitely, like, three or four of those hours where I am just, as you said, like, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to just check in, see what's going on in Instagram. Yeah. And then I just got, I get sucked. Yeah, down you get sucked bit. into a juicy fight, <laughs> like in the comment section. And then you want to check out who this person is, which then leads you down this other rabbit hole. Yeah. And then by the end, you just have a knot in your stomach. And for no fucking reason, nothing was accomplished. You didn't learn anything. No opinions were changed. <laughs> like... Yeah. And, and you know what as well? It's like, like what I've realized and I've only just kind of um, like acknowledged this feeling that I'm about to tell you when I'm s scrolling through my phone I've noticed that if I do it too much like right say say I binge watch a couple of documentaries but they're really mm -hmm. inspiring I'm staring at a screen but it's not making me go oh fuck I'm staring at a screen I'm like no no this is good like I feel inspired. yeah it's like this learning <laughs> yes yeah, it feels like learning but when I'm looking into the phone and I'm on Instagram it doesn't matter if I'm looking at art or, or whatever it is after a while it gets to this point where i can feel this weird like anxiety like building up and it's almost mm -hmm. it's almost like a, a weird pain and i have to be like ah fuck and like throw my my phone yeah. away like it's so bizarre um, yeah well and i think a lot of people like lose sight of like that to an extent instagram isn't real like like online isn't real but also like every person you're talking to like they're a person too so like it's hard to keep that in mind which is why i think people get so vicious because it's easy to say mean shit when you don't have to look someone in the face and like say that like horrible like hateful shit to them you know <laughs> like yeah like no, everyone it is. gets a lot braver from a distance you know so like i don't know yeah, they totally are. That's why I think... I try not to engage in internet fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people, myself included, I'm not judging anyone, but you, it's really easy to mistake Instagram life for uh, <laughs> real life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like and... lots of people think I'm like pretty like wealthy or like, like this is the first first like studio that I've had that wasn't in my bedroom <laughs> you, you know like and this is this year I'm 28 you, you know like like uh, like I'm not like making money off of every single follower I have like it's not like a follower represents a dollar in my bank account you know like I'm still be like good if, be good if it did. sometimes living off my savings like yeah it would be good if everybody who followed me sent me like even just I don't know just 50 cents. <laughs> well, you, I, wonder what would, I wonder what would happen if you asked them. I reckon you, you make, People you would, people a, would you definitely tell me to fuck off because it'd be a pretty selfish move at this time. So I would yeah. deserve it too. But. Yeah, that is true. But we I can like at least idea. talk. Yeah, we can at least talk about the idea. We don't have to actually do it. But I can't yeah, remember I don't who. Need to do it. I can't remember who I was with, but when I was, um, I was out with a few girls hiking and when, it was at the same time that you could just request money, like on, on text. 
You know that you know you can do that. You can li- if someone owes you money, like Venmo or whatever. But it's like oh Apple yeah, Pay. yeah, you can request money. Yeah, you can yeah. request money. And we were talking about how funny it would be just to, um, like mass text your entire your entire phone book, just for like five bucks and and just see, see who responds. Yeah, and I was like, no one's going to give me any money, but you girls might have better luck. But none of, none of us did it, but I thought it could be funny. Could um, be. It could, could work. Could work. Yeah. I, I, well, look, if, you, if you're ever in need of a little bit extra cash, Kristen, just, just make that, start make that post. Just start Venmoing anyone who Venmo them, enough to give me on your Instagram. Stuff. Fuck it. Just be like, look, just a dollar. Stop being cheap. <laughs> but talking about turning uh, 30, I remember when we last spoke briefly, you were talking about um, like going to the gym or exercising. Because I'm yeah, trying not, to do the same. Yeah, not the gym. Yeah, not I would. Gym. I would never go to a gym because what's, what's I don't like people seeing me sweat. Oh. <laughs> and I, I don't like doing things in like classes or like communal type things. Like you know, like I, I'm not really like a, like a you know, I wouldn't want to have to wave hi to the same person and then like <laughs> you know, like have casual conversations in the fucking gym and then see them like sweating my like ass off and like breathing hard. Like that's not for me. But. Um, our roommate got a peloton so like we're all throwing like throwing in on like the subscription and honestly i was really good about it for a while but then like two months of quarantine kicked in and i got like kind of depressed about like pedaling in place all the time (laughs) and like not seeing any significant weight loss by the way so it felt like i was literally going nowhere so i i will admit that i've fallen off the wagon (laughs) Yeah, but sorry. I didn't to mean to laugh at your picture. um I wasn't laughing at your like uh, depression <laughs> at not going anywhere. It was just the way you said it, it's quite funny. But I'm the same, right? <laughs> since um quarantine, since we've had to quarantine, which is like I don't even know how bloody long that's been now. Nearly three months. Um Yeah. So yep. before then I'm I actually really like the gym. I, I do. Um, but just because, and maybe this plays into what you were saying, I just like the routine of it, you know, not being at work, yeah. not being at my house, being somewhere else and being yeah, in that yeah. place just to do this one fucking thing, which yeah. is, you know, stress relief, try and get healthy. But as soon as quarantine here, I know a lot of people were like, right, I'm going to get the Peloton. I'm going to, yeah. you know, I'm going to put like, like, I'm going to make these uh, duffel bags as heavy as possible. I'm going to stop yeah. squatting those, <laughs> lift all these cans of beans. <laughs> I was the opposite. I was, you know what, I'm not showing off, but sequels did a job for Equinox, um, mm-hmm. which obviously, again, bad, bad company. Know too much about them now. So it's like, fuck, I shouldn't oh, even I be going I to bloody... Oh, I didn't know about Equinox. <laughs> Apparently the guy who owns Equinox or who's very high up, he's, he's, He's a vocal Trump supporter, I think. But again, it's like I you mean, only... again, is anyone surprised that the CEOs yeah. of this company are on right. the side of the super rich? <laughs> yeah, like, right. I'm Thank like, you, wow, Kristen. That's so surprising. Like people are looking out for themselves. That's not at all like humans. Exactly, Kristen, <laughs> validating my Equinox um, membership. But yeah, I, I'm with you. And again, we only know that we only know that he supports uh, Trump because we know it. You know, as you say, it's like, just because you don't know that about all the other CEOs doesn't mean mm-hmm. that they aren't doing fucked up shit. If they're, yeah. if they're old, rich, white and unhealthy looking, I guarantee they're doing some really fucked up stuff. Oh, my God. And now we know if they have a private island. Oh, my God. Did you oh have you watched um, I, the I, Jeffrey Epstein? I Epstein. couldn't. I couldn't watch the whole series because just the trailer was like enough to like, because I've like listening to pod, listen to podcasts about him. But it's just like it's like so much, and like the network that supported him is like it reaches out so far that it just makes you feel really depressed about people Life in general, people. like yeah. like how evil people can be. You know, I'm like, wow, that was a whole ton of sh- really dark, dark people. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like, there really is. I mean, look, I I watched the whole thing. I couldn't not do it. Um, once I'd started, I was like, okay, I need to see where this is going. But yeah, it is shocking. Yeah, that... it's like stomach turning. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But that like... island, that island that he had and the people, like the level of people that would go there, like, you know, Donald Trump's been on that island. Bill Clinton's been on that island. The fucking Prince guy, Prince Andrew's been on that island. Yeah. And, it, you know, they interview people who you do believe 
had nothing to do with it. They were literally just like, um, you know, like gardeners or like, you know, maids on the island. They just were doing it yeah. for money. And you do, you kind of, well, you know, you can't really tell, I suppose. But, but I you mean, believe that they, they were They excluded. might have seen, like someone obviously at some point had to see something working there. But also like, you don't know what, how it was working there. So like, <laughs> you know, and what their situation is. I don't know. It's just, yeah. it's really fucked up. All of no. it's really scary. <laughs> like, holy shit. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it is fucked up. It's fucked up. I mean, maybe don't continue watching it then. <laughs> but yeah. um, what oh, was God. I even going to say about the gym? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> going back Working to... out is hard. And got, working out is hard. <laughs> yeah, Equinox is evil. You can't do anything in this life without <laughs> pissing someone off. Um... <laughs> No, but yeah, I couldn't, I just couldn't get into what you were doing with the Peloton. I just couldn't work out at home for that, for that, for that exact reason that I'm at home. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. be like flailing my arms around like in the middle of my living room, you know what I mean? While trying to, <laughs> trying to exercise. What about running? Do you, do you like jogging or anything like that? I need a motivation to run. I'm like, like, uh, like, I don't feel like a very aerodynamic person, you know, like, <laughs> as a child, I was like the child who would like sit on the bench at play at the, at, you know, at, at recess and like read my book. Like that was me. I've always been like a low energy, like sedentary type of person. And like, the only reason I'm working out now is because like, I'm 28. So like, my body don't bounce back like it used to, you know, so like, I don't want to look like shit when I'm old. So it's pure vanity. It's like, it has nothing to do with like health or fitness. Like, I don't want to look like the cheese that I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised at that, yeah. Chris. I would have I definitely yeah. had you down as someone who goes, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about how I look. It's not for that. I just want all my all my bones and joints to work properly. I want to feel I want to feel like you know relaxed and calm, body, body I mean, and mind. I don't need a perfect body. Like I've never had a perfect body. I never will. Like thigh gap that doesn't exist in in my body sphere of possibility. But when I can't fit my pants that I've been able to fit for like years on end and used to have room, I'm like, okay, so things are changing and like maybe necessarily not towards a healthier trend. So it's like, it's better to like <laughs> stop it before it slides too far, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. I am mean, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I honestly, I've put on, and again, look, it's not about like weight, but weight is just a measure where I can see, Oh, I've yeah, it's like what, what I'm comfortable with my body at, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I, I don't want to like, like have like future problems either, because I'm always stressed as shit and stress is the number one killer. So like, I feel like working out will eventually like help my heart health. <laughs> it will. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But you need to do something else other than the Peloton, because that's obviously not doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah, we've well, been trying like long neighborhood walks, you know, but it's kind of hard because it's so hot and with the mask. Your lip gets like so fucking sweaty and you get like, like chin zits and shit. So it's like, I, I don't know. I fucking hate these masks. I know that you shouldn't say that, right? Um, and it's luckily, it's lucky that we, this podcast isn't on the Joe Rogan level. Cause you see that he, he just said like masks are for bitches. And now no. people are trying to cancel okay. Joe Rogan. I like, I don't like wearing a mask. I don't think at, like most people but it's like also part of being like not a selfish adult where you recognize that maybe you do some things that you don't like or are uncomfortable you because do you don't want to spread a, like a disease that kills a bunch of people <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah no you gotta do it you got you gotta wear the mask if they, if they tell you to wear the mask 100 <laughs> percent. but um yeah yeah that that's what i need to get back into though running running outside or jogging outside is the one any time I've felt like d d jogging, even though it can sort of fuck with your knees a little bit, jogging has always been like the glue that holds together me not eating loads of shit. Because again, <laughs> just like I'll stare into that iPhone yeah. for nine hours, if I start drinking like fizzy drinks or eating junk food, I'll just, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Oh, once that you open hole. that bag of chips, it's off. <laughs> game over. <laughs> I'm like done. <laughs> yeah, it's game oh. over. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, no, I'm 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 with you. It's it's bloody tough getting old, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, thir I'm thirty-six. It's, it's not great. You're not even thirty, are you? 
No, I'm I'm 28, going to be 29 in September. So. <laughs> the way you say that, it's like you're thrilled. I would love to be 28 turning 29. You're like a little baby to me. But I have the back of a 55-year-old <laughs> man from hunching all the time. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I do that too, man. Like hunching. Is that what? Is that because that's your um your like uh, illustration style, hunched over? Uh, I mean, my posture has always naturally been bad. Like my mom used to always like tell me that I like slouch, like, you know, I should sit up. But it's definitely gotten worse since I like work at a desk all day and like sit on my butt or like, I'm like stupid. I like draw in bed. So I, I'm just like drawing, you know, like this, like That is not stupid. Up, but... That is not stupid. <laughs> there is no better feeling than creating some work. And look, this might sound shallow, but I really don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. There's no better feeling than creating some work and then getting paid for it, knowing that you did it in bed. <laughs> Knowing that I sat entirely in one spot. Yeah. It's Made a little it. dent, like. <laughs> yeah, and you can look oh. back at that dent and be like, see that? That dent got me two and a half thousand dollars. Anyway, Kristen, you're mad into your reality TV, aren't you? We were talking about that before as well. I'm, I'm, what I'm have you been watching? pretty, I've watched, I've probably watched more reality TV than I should admit to. <laughs> what is that? Just like, is that like in quarantine or just anyway? No, in general. But <laughs> like, um, since since we've started quarantine, I have watched the entirety of Keeping Up with the Kardashians from season one almost until the most current season. Now we're watching the most current season, but we don't have we don't have cable or whatever, so we have to go to my friend's house. But because of quarantine can't really just travel anywhere so so why, i'm trying how, to keep up but how have you not watched any keeping up with the kardashians or are you re oh, i have it? yeah yeah i have um i i re-watched it and then i got luke into it because i was like <laughs> i was like trust me you're gonna want to keep up and it's like we were trying to when the quarantine first broke out we were watching like westworld and shit like really behind but like we were, we were watching westworld but then it got to season two and it was like really depressing and then like the actual depressing real life shit was happening so like we were like okay let's watch something that's like nice and fluffy but like long enough that we can like watch it for a really long time but also like stupid enough that we don't have to pay attention <laughs> while we're like working yes. you know thank you do you not feel and like this this is what i find about yeah, shows reality tv is like perfect, perfect. Oh, sorry. There, there was sorry, a delay there. It hear. jumped. It jumped. But um, th this is what I find about shows is exactly what you say. Like, do you, do you ever get it where you're just watching, you, you know, you'd be towards the end of a season of a show and you're just like, fucking get to the point, please. Like my brain capacity cannot handle more twists and turns and surprises than like yeah, you know, plot yeah. changes. Yeah. Um, so that's why I like I fucking love watching the Kardashians as well. Yeah, exactly. Like you never you never have to pay attention too much. Also in reality TV because they love doing playbacks. So like even if you miss like a <laughs> fight, they'll like play it back and then cut to the person being like, "I never said that." It's like so <laughs> great. It's like it's like it's like a it's like a shitty a shitty Greek tragedy playing out right before you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i love yeah. it and now do you know what it's so funny they'll they'll replay that moment so many times like at the end and beginning of every ad break it's like <laughs> it's that same fight <laughs> it's so good so good and then they always leave the best fight for at the end of the episode so that you're like left being like what the fuck yeah yeah what did yeah. luke so luke you're you're married to luke now right or are you engaged oh uh, we're we're engaged yeah, okay, yeah. and I bet that's probably... I'm married yet. <laughs> no, well, and it, probably a bit of a delay on the engagement, right? With everything oh, yeah. Going on. <laughs> but what did he think? Because what's funny, right, is I, I honestly, I've never been one of those people that's like, oh, you know, I'm not watching reality TV. The Kardashians are so shallow, like, you know, they're yeah, bad yeah. role models. I don't really think life Yeah, I'm not like looking that. to the Kardashians as my role model. I'm right, like, actually, Kim's doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I... So. Do you know what? As a family, yeah... I like watching them. They seem like wholesome, nice, kind people to me that wouldn't do anything like bad. Yeah, to I mean, anyone. like, of course, of course.
course they're fucking out of touch, you know, <laughs> like, they, they, like, of course they're out of touch, they're, like, gazillionaires, and, like, they're, they're, like, a little shallow, but, like, you know, like, like <laughs> who, who am I Kristen? to judge? <laughs> But what, what, what I was going to ask is, what was Luke like watching it? Because I know that there has been shows, yeah, where my girlfriend will be watching a show and I'll be, like, over in the corner, like, oh, no, that's, you know, that's nonsense. I'm not watching that. And then I'll sit down and start watching it. And then before you know it, she's coming home finding me watching her fucking show. What was Luke like with the Kardashians? Was he up for it from the beginning or do you, do you have to coax him into it? He had already seen an episode and somewhat expressed interest in possibly <laughs> keeping up, but had never fully committed to it. Possibly so keeping up. So all he needed Kardashians. was for me to like tip him over. <laughs> you know, I had to be like, "We're doing this." And once we committed to watching like every single episode, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of awesome seeing reality uh, TV like like binging it because I, I don't really, I haven't really done that before. Like most of the reality TV I've seen in real time. So you kind of like forget certain things or like forget like certain people who keep popping up, but it's cool. Cause when you watch it all at once and you already know kind of what happens, you can be like, Oh my God, that's the one who blah, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. And then like, you see them like three years later and it like comes out and like crazy. <laughs> I don't know. It's cool. Uh, I like uh, it. <laughs> I also quite like watching the cool thing about reality TV is that I like watching people, especially now, I like watching people doing shit that we can't do anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like getting together at a restaurant and like hugging each other. Oh, and it's also stupid and mindless, you know, like it's it's like it's like fluffy and like like, you know, sometimes you just kind of need an escape. That's I'm not that I'm calling reality TV art, but I'm <laughs> saying like that's why we like literature, music, operas, the theater, movies, like a good painting, because it gives our like minds like a little time to focus away from like our inner dialogue and like see someone else's world. And like reality TV is literally like just showing you an edited version of like someone else's world, like completely. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It it's interesting. Cool. It is interesting. And I think as well, it's like, we, you know, humans have the capacity for loads of different things happening. And I like that. I like the fact that, you know, it, on an average day, I will be for a few hours really up for doing some intense work, even sending emails and like figuring mm -hmm. shit out, admin stuff. Sometimes I'm really up for it. Other times I don't want to do that at all. Yeah. Other times just want to fucking zone out, you know? Zone out. And I might, you know, sometimes I might like listen to some <laughs> classical music. Other times I might listen to some like, you know, like really fucking shitty pop or some yeah, like, yeah. you know, aggressive rap. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. doesn't always have to be like, you can really overload on the higher brow. Like, yeah, stuff, yeah. You know? Like I have, I have my PBS viewing membership, you know, <laughs> and then I also have my like Vanderpump rules, like below deck watching side. You know? Vanderpump rules. <laughs> what one, who is Vanderpump is a well, woman from, what that, is she from? Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I've seen yeah, a bit I watch, that, but I haven't seen Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, I, I really watch Vanderpump Rules. I was pretty religiously watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I still actively keep up with Real Housewives of Atlanta. I like, I, I, I watched a lot of Dance Moms. Oh my God, Dance, <laughs> dance Moms. That is crazy. That woman, the, the woman that's <laughs> constantly like, like like shattering dreams she's evil small, <laughs> small children just just a woman just yelling at children all the time i admit it was a it was a it was a sicker part of me that really enjoys that show like it's just so interesting seeing all these fucking insane moms and like this crazy teacher and like this crazy competitive children's dance world <laughs> that i had no idea existed i was like yeah. i was like like it's like 40 or 50 year olds like women arguing with each other over which child got a solo i'm like i'm like how can you not watch yeah it's amazing it's got that same kind of i was talking to this i was talking about this on the last podcast with che our mate che 
Um, and it's just got that kind of, it's like car crash TV kind of, you just want to be, you know, you just want to be in that like mode of like, oh my God, this is so fucked up, but I'm loving it. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, it's like Karen's on Instagram. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh my what God. Is, what is that? Did you know what? I would like, the, there's this one account, um, which I will send you to, but it's not as good at the minute because I think all the videos just keep getting, um keep getting uh like flagged and taken down but it's this guy that set up a, a, a an instagram account called karen's going wild and it's basically a carrot you know what a karen is a karen is like a kind of yeah yeah the, uh, may i um can i speak to the manager type woman <laughs> yeah yeah so it's just all these insane things. And I think probably Dance Mom Woman has been on the Karen thing. Oh, oh they're deaf. They literally have like the asymmetrical aggressive bomb. Like so yeah. many of them have had that. Yeah, yeah, Where they're yeah. like, my child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the staple <laughs> like, of, a, oh of a Karen. So that's the account. And it's just, it's just video after video oh. of, you know, these, these women kind of just being... Heinous. And, Heinous. Anywhere from like pretty fucking unreasonable to just all out like evil. <laughs> you know? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but, it, but it is fucking funny. But sorry, so Vanderpump Rules, yeah, that's one I haven't really seen. Some, another one that I have seen is um, Selling Sunset. Have you seen Selling, Selling Sunset? I've heard good things about Selling Sunset. <laughs> Like good, bad things, you know? And like I saw the trailer and they all look like really terrible. So it's awesome. I love, I'm like, the, what? I love the way that like we, you know, in a, in a parallel universe, we'd be on here like critiquing like artwork with the same vigor as we are as reality we are TV. Reality you're TV. like, you're like, I have heard great things <laughs> about Selling Sunset. <laughs> Selling Sunset is amazing. Yeah, well, and it's just so interesting to me because, like, all these people live in the same city I do, but their experience of L.A. is, like, so separate from mine. And, like, I'm sure, like, in the same way that I judge them and I think that they're, like, horrible, like, sh shallow people who I love to, like, watch be petty and make fools of themselves, I'm sure if they watched me, they would, they would think I was, like, ugly and like gross and like dirty and poor you know and just like <laughs> lame and I never go out and I don't have enough friends you know so I'm like like there's obvious like you know so it's just but maybe like not. interesting for me to like Kristen, just see maybe this we whole would, other world <laughs> maybe we'd all maybe we'd all love each other how about that? maybe we would I mean I tell so, you what some, yeah, what, some of them some of them yeah yeah, yeah like obviously. some like I love Lala on Vanderpump Rules. Like, I think she's like a cool bit. You like, like, of course, some of the people on the reality TV. I'm not all watching for them to all like go down in flames. But look, but, like, so, you know, uh, Kristen, I'll go to a house play. party. I'll go to a house party with my friends, yeah. And there'll always be someone there that you're like, yeah, yeah, fuck that person. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun. But you take. Yeah. So look, if I somehow got an invite. And, and I was like, I, I called you up and I was like, right, Kristen, you and Luke can come to this Selling Sunset, um, like, pool party. Bravo TV extravaganza. Would you, would you come? Or would you be Of course. Be like, exactly, oh, my right? God. Exactly. Oh, my God. I would come with a fucking, like, signature notebook for them <laughs> to, like... But you, you know what you were saying about, like, how they live, like, completely different lives. I mean, I yeah. find it entertaining. But sometimes I definitely am like, oh, for fuck's sake, maybe I'm in the wrong job. I want to sell a $30 million house. Condo. And get a, yeah, get like a $3 million commission. And do, do you know what I mean? Go to, go to a pool party with some weird little bald twins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, it would definitely be interesting, but I just... I just feel like that lifestyle has its own pressures that I could never keep up with. You yeah, know? I, I don't think there's a lifestyle like, out there that doesn't doesn't have its own pressures. By yeah, the way, yeah. the, bald, the bald twins <laughs> reference, I just realized you haven't actually seen it, so that might sound a little weird. The two dudes are but like who own the uh the i think i think because i've seen a trailer for it so i yeah. do think i know who you're talking about because like luke and i were planning on watching it like once we got through some other things yeah yeah <laughs> so you know it's coming up mate i love it nothing wrong with a bit of reality tv
But we should get back. We should get back to the art a little bit. Yeah, Kristen. stare <laughs> back towards art. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes there's a little, a little. If anyone listening, there's a little tiny delay here and there. So sorry yeah, for yeah. stuttering at points, but that's give, the world us, we live in. Give us a little a leeway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us a little leeway. I think we've covered some in- incredible, um, real highbrow <laughs> stuff. Hey, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you can see all the highbrow influences in my work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But where, so where, like, have you always, you know, what is your kind of like, um, like, how did you get to, to, to where you are now in terms of like your painting style? Were you into like life drawing and then you were just like, right, fuck this. I want to ramp this shit up, you know? Because uh, well, I love your art. I fucking love your art. And what I love about it yeah. is... The, it is because it's so real and there's like you know hairy legs and arm like armpit hair but then also like people giving head to other people and it's just like yes fucking come on it's brilliant but thank like so you, you know were you. were you like a little, a little like 12 year old girl like drawing that stuff and your mum and teachers were like ah fuck no but i will say my mom my mom wouldn't let us watch south park as little kids you know although we did watch south park in high school but i will have the humor of a 12 year old boy but uh (laughs) like she wouldn't let us watch certain things but in terms of art or literature she never really censored what we what we it like took in so like was that like i was was lucky was that a conscious choice on her part or did she just not really know like what was going on in the um, I mean, she she's an elementary art school teacher, and like, um, so I was cool. always kind of raised with an appreciation for art. And she finished her textile degree, four year degree, while we, while she was raising us. So like, she would take us to her like classes at night, and we would like have to sit in her art history classes, or like oh, wow. go spend time with her like in the like by the looms and the dye pots, like finishing up our homework. So I think we were just always kind of lucky, and like she was like a single mom so like she you know she and my grandmother raised us and my grandmother was like also an elementary school teacher so they really encouraged us reading and like taking in certain things like like opera or like the symphony like we would just go on free days (laughs) we would buy like the cheapest seats you know or like we would go to the library a lot because they have like summer reading programs so I think I was just always kind of raised looking at a bunch of different things and in high school, I kind of got like, you know, you're insecure as a teenager. So I started trying to just draw more technical stuff. Like I was very like, like always trying to prove something, you know, like doing like really fussy things, which I kind of think helped develop my sense of attention to detail. But like when you get to college, I hadn't really like, I hadn't really like ever I was always questioning whether or not it was possible to to be an art, like actually be like a, a full time artist for me, you know. And, and that sounds really cheesy, but I I saw uh, Beautiful Losers in in my junior year around the same time that I got like a really awesome professor Kenichi Hoshini who took over a class from my from the professor I started out with. So like he like really helped like guide me, and I saw this movie that like changed my idea of like what a young artist can do and like how they need to approach their work like you know they can like also just have fun with it and like present the world that they're in you know and just like it kind of just like clicked with me it like helps me find things that like spoke to me maybe on a more personal level than seeing a Caravaggio would Uh, not to say that I don't love a Caravaggio but like seeing like a like a Margaret Kilgallen piece, it feels like more attainable to be great at art than seeing like the way Caravaggio paints and being like, like, like holy shit, like how do I get to there? You know, so it, it felt like more possible. So like my mom had always like showed us folk art and like like textile art and stuff. But so I started like looking at that again. And I think that also really helps like push me in the right direction and find a helped me find like a visual language that felt like mine and it took it took a while and I'm like still changing things and like I hope my work looks different in 10 years you know you never want your work to always look the same but yeah I don't know 
No, that's dope. And so the um, the instructor, the tutor, sorry, that, that switched in, was that, that yeah. was just a coincidence? Like that wasn't supposed to happen? Yeah, I think our professor, I'm not sure why professor. she left like mid mid semester, but she did. And it was um and it was an illustration methods and media class. So like you learn different different oh. type like mediums, you know? And so like and like Kenichi, he's like he he's his work's so good and he has like the coolest friends like friends with like James Jean and like Moo Pam. Like they all went to like uh SBA together and like Another awesome professor at the school was like Jordan Essop. And then I had Dennis McNett like teach me silk screen at Pratt. And it's so, like to learn printmaking from Dennis McNett is like pretty cool too. So like like I had a I had a lot of good professors towards the last half of my um my duration at Pratt that really like helps helps me like find what where I wanted to go. Yeah, that's great when that does happen because <clears throat> You know, I think a lot of people have a different experience. So it's always great when professors really do have an, a, an awesome impact. My, mine didn't yeah. so much, but that's dope. Like, are you still in touch with them now? And like, they must be buzzing about your work. Like, I mean, I mean, like, I, I still like, can you see and I follow each other on Instagram? Like, <laughs> I, 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 and I still like kind of in, keep in touch with them to an extent because like, you know, nowadays you can just like, you know, like, like someone's piece and like, just kind of see what they're still doing. And like, um, sadly, sadly, Pratt, their illustration department, like, I hope no one from Pratt is listening and like, hears me bad mouthing them, but they like really fucked up because they've redone their entire like illustration department and like gotten rid of like, all, like some of the best professors there to be more digitally focused. So like Kenichi doesn't even work there anymore. Like my other professor Chang doesn't work there. Like Dennis hasn't worked there for like years. So like, I don't know how the new professors are, but I'm just saying they, they lost a lot of good teachers by deciding to like completely discredit non-digital mediums as illustration. Yeah, that so. sounds like a mad decision. And Pratt is, that's like one of the best schools, right? I hope so. Cause they sure charged me like they were. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still paying, paying my fucking loans. Yeah, but that does, it seems like a weird decision to kind of like completely move away. I mean, I'm sure they haven't completely, but to predominantly move into yeah. digital. Yeah, they're move. like restructuring it to be like more graphic design, like digital illustration emphasis, which is like, I don't know. I feel like it's, I don't want to discredit digital art or anything because it's like obviously like crazy and it's a whole it's like a medium in itself but i also think it's really important to be able to learn how certain mediums work like besides just digital, because i think it's easier to it's easier to learn how to paint digitally than it is to paint with oils or acrylics like it just is you can erase that you can go back you know like the computer can help you straighten things like i think it's important to learn how to move your own hand and how to deal with and fix mistakes before you go on to that you know it's like it's just like a basic like education like a fun fundamental education i think like yeah no i, I agree with that that should be you, dismissed <laughs> yeah you're kind of missing out steps if you do do it because you're right like digital is such a shortcut because you can just literally you know change whole colors of backgrounds and all that kind of stuff i mean do you, you're none of your work is um is digital and do, do you it do is, any it is some of it is. Um, for, stuff, right? when i do illustrations when i do yeah. because um i mean it's not it like there was a really good article recently about like why a lot of illustration tends to look like each other now and like why the style has kind of become to an extent like more homogenous and it's like they pointed out like illustrators if you account for inflation we get paid like less than during the golden age of illustration you know like way less we have like so many fast deadlines because like news the news cycle is so fast now and like with changes it's just like faster and more efficient and you can send the image digitally you know like the, obviously like some things like the time magazine covers are still painted and stuff but for like your everyday like spot illustration that goes with an article it's like some some art art directors like will need an image like the next day you know so it's like you can't like illustrators just physically can't like keep up with certain things like or do like crazy oil paintings like they used to you know so in some ways it's like not their fault either and i 
I respect that. Like, I think it's good that Pratt is like looking at the way art is changing, but I also think it's important to not only offer that because I, I like, I really like like handmade stuff. I think a lot of like people who create feel themselves drawn to something that is done by like the human touch. Like I, I personally just do like, like a painting has so much life. Like when you see it compared to a printout, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's kind of dangerous as well because it feels like if, um, the institutions like Pratt are kind of like moving away from handmade stuff and more into digital, then, as you say, it's like we, you know, and I, I used to direct like some um, some music videos and the same thing would start to happen. As technology got cheaper, um, more people would uh, just have access to be able to make music videos, right? It used mm -hmm. to cost loads to hire all the equipment yeah. and do it properly. But we, we started moving into this kind of... Um, this like this time of just anyone being able to make a music video and it's kind of similar in illustration you know it's like yeah if, if you've got the te technology which yeah it's expensive but it's not like you know you can get hold of everything you need for not that much i think it just puts it gives people the ability to n knock out work quickly that can appear to be of a high standard but might not be might not have the kind of learning um, an education yeah. behind it that you're talking about yeah yeah well it's like it's like if if all your work is like online like you know it's like who are you I mean I guess you could put up a bunch of screens and have a museum show or something but it's like it's just not as exciting you know I don't know do what I do Kristen you just get a load of masking tape <laughs> and you you just um project the 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 fucking image that you did on the computer and paint it that's true. And it's like, I love some digital art, you know, like people are doing really cool shit with digital work. I, I'm just saying that overall, I think it's important to learn the basics and fundamentals of like drawing, how light works, how like, how your own hands, like the, like the pressure on certain, certain things, you know, they're just uh, certain physical is. like skills that yeah. are important. And you know what, it sounds silly, but that like, obviously like illustration in general is very prevalent and loads of people do it. So we might not be here yet, but there is a danger that certain like crafts um, get lost. I, I can't mm -hmm. remember what I was listening to, but someone was talking about like handmade boots or something like that. And that yeah. they were, they were made in a certain way. Um, and they wanted to like bring that back. And then they realized that no one could do it because no, no young oh. people knew how to do it. So luckily, like they actually went and kind of like basically there was a load of like retired people who used to do it. And they kind of brought them out of retirement to teach the, you know, the young generation. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's important. You know, things will get lost if you don't. Yeah. And like there are up. certain things like like even in just old movies, like I love it when old, old movies have like all the crazy sets and the like kind of wonky looking puppets, you know, like. It just gives it a, a more like personal, creative, imaginative feel than when everything is like perfectly smoothed over, like perfectly, you know, presented. Like I like, I like the quirks that a human hand brings to a piece. Yes. Yeah, so I like, feel that um, like that's why paint, like actual paintings or like sculptures or like drawings will always feel like a little more personal to me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. You when you were talking about the movies, you I, labyrinth popped into my head. Yeah, um, yeah, like like nobody would take the fucking time to make all those puppets nowadays. It'd be way yeah. too expensive, you know. Like, like I don't know. But even like Indiana Jones and stuff, you know, I like the way that it's like that boulder really is yeah. chasing him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a computer. Like it, it kind of like the human eye is like can pick up on those things that's why my paintings don't even like they look like shit on online compared to how they look like in real life i always i always feel like i feel like my work looks so, so much, much better, better in real, real life. life yeah just because well, like the colors i use are like like a computer screen can't successfully capture the glow that neon actually puts off like a fluorescent yeah. and like how it like contrasts with the dark area like you can't get that in a scan I need so. to see your work in real life because it, <laughs> it, it looks it's pretty, shit on the it computer. Looks, no, it looks pretty <laughs> fucking good on the phone. I'm going to tell you that for free. Um, it looks amazing. So if it looks even better than that, I think that's, um, that's quite incredible. Stay in this, though. I watched Jumanji 2 <laughs> yesterday. 
and I fucking loved it. Jumanji too. I I wait. Are you talking about the second one in the in the re Rock remake? Yeah, yeah. So I not, actually so... prefer Jumanji one. Really? To Jumanji two. <laughs> Yeah, well, because The Rock's, like, Brooklyn accent was, like, distractingly bad. I was like, The Rock should not attempt a Brooklyn accent. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Because it's, like, their, their role, The Rock would be like, okay, so who am I playing? And it's like, you're playing a computer game character um, that's, like, be... With Danny DeVito trapped inside you. Inside of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, his accent kind of was so bad, it just distracts. And I love The Rock. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Rock fan. Ever since I saw him on Nash Bridges, I've like been, like, okay with The Rock. You know, but, like, he, he cannot do a good Danny DeVito accent. Yeah, yeah. I know. Jack, Jack <laughs> Black. Jack Black smashes that, though, in Jumanji 2. I do like Jack Because he plays, um, the, he plays the, the, the big guy, the, the kid, Fridge. Is his name Fridge? He plays him. And I think he, yeah. nail, he nails his accent. And then he does the, um, like the kind of blonde, like, bimbo girl. But I Although, think Jack Black is a, a, probably better at doing impersonations than The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, The Rock started out as a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but wrestling's fake, so you should be well practice it impersonating. But he only had to play one character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, Kr Kristen, what um have you what have you got coming up? Have you got anything that you want to want to talk about? Or let people know. I mean, the world's so weird at the minute, isn't it? Do you do you, do you have you yeah. got work at the minute? Like, how's it all going? Uh, I mean, I have had some things cancelled, you know, or like put off, or like. You know, shows are, the whole point of a show is that people can, like, see the piece in real life for me. And, like, you get to, like, like there's that sense of, like, community and, like, you know, all that stuff. So it's been kind of disappointing having, like, only virtual openings, even though it's necessary. But, um, yeah, so I do have a show with New Image Art in August coming up. It's probably gonna have to have a virtual opening but i think you will be able to schedule like viewing appointments if you're like in los angeles um where's it where is that gonna be a uh, new image art it's on santa monica boulevard so right oh, cool. right in la in west hollywood uh yeah so I, i'm doing that in august uh i have a collaborative show with luke that we're actually working on right now work for um with with super chief and we think it'll be in November, but um, Super Chief, right before all this quarantine shit went down, the building next door had an explosion. So they lost their LA venue and then they had to quarantine. So like they haven't even been able to search for a new spot. So we're probably going to do a pop-up somewhere. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. Hang on. Was that, where is that? Is that like near downtown? It wasn't that explosion yeah. and massive fire, was it? Yeah, it was a, like a massive explosion and fire. And I think it was because they had like some like weed oil company oh. next to them that was like doing some like a, like shady shit. And they like explode, like completely exploded. And like luckily no one was killed. But I think yeah. two workers were hurt. But it was but, like, like no that was all over a citizen app. It was like a mushroom cloud of like fire. Yeah. Like it was yeah, huge. Yeah, it was fucking huge. So it like it totally fucked up Super Chief. Like somehow their storage room managed to stay safe so like all of the art was somehow like wow. okay but and like nobody was hurt also thank god but like they have had to like completely put everything like in storage and like we're just like figuring out like how to do a pop-up like how to adjust for things we were we were kind of supposed to have like a line with Rivka coming out, like a collab line coming out around the same time. But like, that's kind of been pushed to next year just because like everything's so up in the air and like, yeah. Yeah. So, 2020 you know. just is up in the air, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And like, like lots of galleries have been really good about trying their best to go ahead with like shows and like keeping them on schedule for the artists. But it is inevitable that some things have been canceled or put off and like some jobs have been canceled and like people aren't looking for work as much right now, you know? Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm super glad that I'm like always really cheap and I like <laughs> save a bunch of money, <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a paranoid person. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. Have you got a little um, earthquake bunker with all your rations and supplies? Oh, I wish. 
<laughs> I wish. Oh, I, I used to be afraid of uh, natural disasters in high school. So I had like, I had this like flashlight, like match, like combo alarm system thing that I carry around with me. <laughs> and I also had like this one notebook that I kept like a record of every single thing that I thought was important in it. So I'd like cut out little images of like a piece that I made that I like, or I'd like put pictures of everyone who was important to me in the book and like label it. You know, like I like I've always done like kind of like like I like to like have like little groups of things and information. So I don't know. What just in case shit goes down? Yeah, like I always like think of like there's like you know how they're always like, What would you grab? So like I'm like I always oh, like okay. having, having like one thing that I would like grab and then like all of my memories and information are there. I like, I it. guess nowadays it would be like my sketchbook, but it's like a desert island discs or whatever it's called. Have you heard of that? It's a, that's a, that's a British thing, but yeah. it's like, I can't remember who the, um, who the host of the radio show is, but it's a radio show where the woman gets on like a guest, massive guests, world, world famous guests, and they come on and they have to go through their like top, <laughs> top three, like records that they'd be stranded on an island with. That'd be hard to pick. If you're yeah, listening you, to that shit forever <laughs> you would need it you just need your little scrapbook of all the pic pics yeah. cut out and glued in yeah well look Kristen, will um you know if yeah if by the time this podcast comes out which is only going to be in a couple of days after we recorded it um if there is oh, any yeah. any enough. solid uh exhibitions or whatever we'll just put it we'll, we'll link to it in the in yeah the yeah i mean my new image show is definitely happening in august Great. i Great. i just we haven't come up with a hard date yet so you know but <laughs> Things right, well, are look, happening, I think. <laughs> yeah, they will. Yeah. Life, sure. life will hopefully work <laughs> yeah. its stuff out. Um, but listen, thanks for chatting to us. I thought yeah, that was really great. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we covered off some highbrow art and some lowbrow <laughs> reality TV. Like oh, um, our God. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, good, good luck with the Peloton and uh, with finishing <sighs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yeah, got to get up there. Got to get <laughs> up on that Peloton. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. See you later. Bye.